Creation of the WBS is one of the major steps in project management scope. The other steps include defining scope, collecting the requirements, verifying scope, and controlling the scope. We will talk about collecting requirements and what goes on in the scope statement later. But when I'm explaining new project startup, I like to say that my approach is to start with what the project does without considering who or how. The WBS is firmly rooted in the middle of what. WBS stands for Work Breakdown Structure. The PMBOK defines it as a deliverable-oriented hierarchical decomposition of the work to be executed by the project team to accomplish the project objectives and create the required deliverables, with each new level of the WBS representing an increasing detailed definition of the project work. The inputs to this step include the scope statement, the requirements documentation, and the processes your organization uses during scope development. In the last video, the one about scope, I explained that the PIM box suggests that you finish the scope statement and requirements prior to starting the WBS. I went on to explain that in my experience, it never works that way and you actually create all three at the same time. The technique used to create the WBS is deliverables decomposition, so let's talk about that. Imagine you are given a project to create a fully functional international airport. Now, for the sake of this example, let's ignore the fact that creating an airport is bigger than a project and would probably exist at a program level or even higher. The point is, you couldn't possibly sit down at a desk and jot down all the tasks necessary to complete this effort. The work breakdown structure deliverable decompositions is going to help us with this problem. The work breakdown structure would start at the highest level, that being the airport. Done correctly, the WBS won't contain any verbs. We're doing a decomposition of deliverables, so we don't need any verbs, only nouns. The WBS has a focus on what is to be done. It doesn't care about how the deliverables will be created or who is going to create them. It's all about what, and for that, we only need nouns. At the next level, we could decompose the airport into its major parts. The major parts would include the location of the airport, the runway infrastructure, weather forecasting, transportation. By transportation, we mean the ability to get to and from the airport, so roads, rail, rail systems, that kind of thing. Project management, security, both security in the way of emergency equipment as well as security for the airport location and the passengers. Passenger terminals, air traffic control, and aircraft maintenance. Now we have some major pieces of the airport, but we're still at a level that is too high to comprehend and manage the activities necessary to achieve the goal. Each of these would need to go to the next level of detail. For example, if you broke down runway infrastructure, you'd have things like runway markings, the directions of runways going to run, the composition of the material the runway is made of, the dimensions of the runway, snow removal, runway lighting, taxiways, things like that. If we broke down passenger terminals, we'd end up with things like the parking lot, ticketing areas in the passenger terminal, security inside the terminal, the ability to get baggage to and from the aircraft, gates, the retail stores that are inside the airport, food service, the communication, like the PA system where they're announcing flights coming and going, that kind of thing, maintenance of the building itself, etc. Now, if I were to go from the food service and further decompose, there's going to be things that are part of food service, such as restaurants, snack kiosks, food courts, vending machines, the airline lounges like the Admirals Club where they have food for passengers who go in there, food served at a bar, aircraft meals that are put on the aircraft for passengers. And then if I further decompose the food court, you'd have maybe a burger place, a pizza place, a place serving Mexican cuisine, Chinese food, Italian restaurants, delis, that kind of thing. Now, I could go into each one of these restaurants and further decompose those. So let's do the one with burgers. The burger restaurant, we're going to have to have the counter where the cash registers are. There's going to have to be a storage area for storing, I don't know, food, storing the utensils, that kind of thing. The kitchen's going to have to be designed and built out. The supply chain's going to have to be worked out for bringing food into the restaurant and replacing paper cups, paper plates, that kind of thing. All the health and safety requirements have to be considered, so that's going to be one of the breakdown areas. 
utilities, things like water, electricity, gas, human resources for the restaurant, hiring the employees, the marketing of the restaurant. You know, we have to put signs out in different places, maybe have different ways of getting people familiar with the fact that this restaurant is available. And also design of the restaurant and how that's going to work out. Then if we further subdivided the kitchen on down, we're going to have the fryers that we need. We're going to have the grill, the warmers, microwave ovens, the cleaning supplies and where we're going to work those, sinks that they use, some of the logistics, the mechanics of how they run the restaurant, that kind of thing. The lowest level of WBS decomposition is called a work package. Think of a work package as a deliverable that is decomposed to a level where you can comprehend all of the tasks necessary to create that deliverable. At this level, you should be able to identify, estimate, schedule, monitor, and control all the activities necessary to build the work package. So the sinks deliverable is at a work package level. I can sit down at the desk and come up with all of the activities I must perform to achieve the sinks deliverable. Especially in light of the fact that the restaurant design is already completed, so I already know the dimensions of the sinks and where to place them. All of these deliverables are fully decomposed to the work package level. I can come up with all of the activities I need to perform to achieve the microwave and cleaning deliverables. The next thing we need to understand is that we can reach the work package level of decomposition at different levels of our WBS. I expect we don't need to decompose the vending machines deliverable farther in order to understand the activities of achieving this deliverable. Same for deciding what materials the runway should be composed of or the runway dimensions. Everything in a work package level has no additional level of decomposition. There will be a line coming in the top, but none going at the bottom. The deliverables that are not fully decomposed, like the food court deliverable, will have subordinate decomposition levels. This means we're decomposing to a level where we can comprehend all the steps necessary to create this deliverable. So when we finish using the deliverables decomposition technique, we have the first of our four output items, the work breakdown structure. The finished work breakdown structure gives us a complete list of fully decomposed deliverables at the work package level. This is a major component in understanding what the project is going to do. The next output on our list will help us better understand each work package and the activities, commonly called tasks, necessary to create the deliverable. The WBS Dictionary is a project artifact that we create while we are doing decomposition of the deliverables. The WBS Dictionary provides more detailed descriptions of the work packages and control accounts. It has information like what organization is responsible, schedule milestones related to the work package, quality requirements, cost estimates, and contact information. The WBS dictionary information can be contained in a number of places or formats. If you've been using a WBS tool like WBS Chart Pro, the tool will manage the information for you. Perhaps a standard for your organization directs you to store the information in a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet or even an MS project file. You could even store the information in the properties of a Visio chart, I suppose. The important takeaway here is that you need to find out what the standard is for your organization. Odds are pretty good that your program manager will be able to help you with this answer if it isn't obvious from looking at your project framework. Once you have the work breakdown structure, WBS dictionary, and scope statement completed and signed off, you can save them off as a baseline, enact change control, and start to manage the scope as the project moves forward. The last output from the Create WBS step is Project Documentation Updates. I think this one is oriented toward the PMBOK view that the scope document and requirements documents would be done before you started work on the WBS. The idea is that if one of these changed while you're doing the WBS, then part of the output would be to document those changes. My belief is that changes to the scope and requirements documents during development of the WBS are a given. So this output, though rhetorical in nature prior to baselining the scope, is definitely going to happen. Remember, you really can't capture everything you need to know about your deliverables without doing a decent requirements document. So be sure to view the video on that topic too.